Happy Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Happy Hour. This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Guess what it's time for? No! Happy Hot Topic! What time is it? No! Happy Hot Topic! Well, I am recording at 6.31 p.m. on February 9th, 2022. But once again, it is time for... No! Happy Hot Topic! Kevin Hart is once again poking fun at his pal, Nick Cannon. Kevin Hart's poking fun at Nick Cannon, and Nick Cannon's just poking all these women, knocking them up. Oh, he's going to be a great dad. The fact that we have 24 hours in a day and he does about four different jobs and sleeps and works out. Oh, I'm sure he's there for all his kids. The comedian took to Instagram to reveal that he sent his buddy a pretty cheeky gift, a vending machine full of condoms. Which I think should be the prize of any like uh, TV show. You know what I mean? Like That's something that should be given out because it gets, I, I can't even imagine I don't need to be in the game, but I can't imagine back in the day when I had to buy them, Man, inflation prices, it had to go up, bro. Oh, I see. Literally, but. So you got my gift at Nick Cannon. Got you, Now you don't have an excuse because the condoms are free. <gasps> Hashtag prank wars. Kevin wrote alongside a pic of Nick, posing next to the not safe for work gift. Nick posted the same photo on his own IG account a day earlier, but didn't disclose who sent him all those condoms. Yeah, he's a little embarrassed that Kevin Hart, one of the biggest comedians ever, is kind of making fun of him. Because I think Nick Cannon is finally having the realization that this isn't cool that he had all these kids. I think he thinks he's expressing himself and building a legacy, and he's so great and wonderful because he, he, oh geez, he finishes inside a women. Woo, look at me. I mean, this is a podcast. I should have just said it. But I think he thinks he's like so edgy and crazy because he's having kids. But I think now he's realizing like, yeah, I'm kind of a weird guy. People aren't really down with what I'm doing. No one's like, oh, my God, Nick Cannon's having kids that aren't going to have a father. (laughs) You go, Nick. You're so noble. You're like a real life sage. The way you knock up women that are with you for your money. Writing at the time, quote, Looks like somebody just sent me an early Valentine's Day gift. Vending machine full of magnums. Then he had the uh, emoji where the hands on the face and like, yeah. Kevin's latest prank on Nick comes just days after the TV host announced that he is expecting his eighth child, model Brie Tussie. I always find it gross. And I noticed this thing in Florida where a lot of people in their 20s have like five or six kids. I'm like, Jesus, like that is six times unless you missed uh, the birth to go do some dumb gig. But it just seems like a lot of times like you're going through six pregnancies. Nick Hennon's been through eight pregnancies. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about the moment. I've never had it. I might have it someday. I don't know. But it seems like a pretty big deal when a new person is being brought into this earth. I just talked like Mike Tyson. When a new being is being born, I feel like that's a big deal. Like, that's something you shouldn't experience that often. And when these Florida people are having, like, six times that happening and then you have nick cannon having it happen eight times like that's not an experience you should like be going through that often having kids like that's unhealthy i feel like you begin to kind of become numb to it like i feel like the first maybe three kids you have you're like oh my god this little cute angel came out of me and then by the sixth time you're like what's on sports center tonight the mass Singer host is already a father to seven other kids. Gross. And he welcomed a baby boy Zen with Alyssa Scott in June 2021. And then that poor angel died. But the infant tragically died at just five months old on December. And then he was knocking up another chick while this kid was sick and dying. I mean, this is a sickness, bro. I know it probably feels good, but you're a douche. 
on. But the infant tragically died at just five months old on December 5th after being diagnosed with brain cancer yeah. last year. Okay. The 41-year-old recently explained on his talk show how challenging it has been to celebrate the new addition to his family. But don't knock up women then. While mourning the loss of his son. It's like getting a speeding ticket and being like, oh, it's so inconvenient getting pulled over by the cops. Well, it is. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by FitSage Fitness.com. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. I am here to see you succeed. You are already listening to Hoppy Hour, so you have a good taste in podcasting. You have a good taste in entertainment. So I'm trying to lead you into the direction of the best trainer podcast possible fitsagefitness.com if you don't live in florida don't worry you can work out with him virtually because that's how the future is happy hour in the morning and working out with fitsagefitness.com when you do that you become a king happy hour happy hour like a uh, nine thousand dollar prostitute please oh do you have nine one thousand dollar ones yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep, so get him up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f-ing bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. That the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, we have some breaking news. Has reached the Happy Hour headquarters, BMI apartment, and me going to Google.com. Because we got all the top notch insiders here at Happy Hour. All right, enough of that. There is shortages out there, there is inflation, shrinkage. Everybody's showing off their. Small dick energy, so you know for sure there's shrinkage going on in the world. But this right here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's not the biggest inconvenience of all time. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, isn't the worst thing to happen, but the fact that it's happening is a sign that we are doomed. The fact that this is happening is a sign that things are not the best right now. This Super Bowl Sunday, the game day staple chicken wings could be hazardous to your wealth. If- That's the thing. The fact that chicken wings are going up, not that I'm going to get some, I might get some, but the fact that they went up for no reason, yeah. Like, I know there's inflation and maybe a lack of chickens or whatever, but the fact that we're getting screwed for the same thing, it's not like the prices went up and the chicken wings tasted better or they don't give you the shits. If you are experiencing sticker shock, you are not alone. The oh, price thank of you. chicken wings. I was so worried. I was alone. Like, I was the only one paying the inflation prices. But Ann Mercer G. Lano points out that everybody's going through it. Oh, thank God. You got me so worried. Chicken wings is up by more than a dollar per pound compared to the same time last year. Yeah. Joseph Rayo has had to raise wing prices at his New York City bar, Mudville 9. Oh, Mudville 9. Oh, what a fun place. How much do the six wings cost right now? Six wings right now go for 14 Ha, <laughs> Six wings for fourteen dollars. I mean, that's probably the same price he had before because it's New York City. It's not a difference. Wow. You know, before COVID would wow be like seven bucks. Oh no, it wasn't. You're just saying that because you're on the news, so you're trying to lie. But it was twenty one bucks two years ago. So the wings are double the price. Yeah. And finding wings at your local grocery store could be a challenge. It really is weird when you go anywhere and you see empty shelves. Like, I keep thinking these places are going out of business. Like, you go into Target and you're like, are they closing? Like, they essentially are closed. Why? Amazon.com. Just saying. Are you concerned you might not have enough chicken wings for Super Bowl Sunday? Absolutely concerned. This is an item that has to be cut up and produced. Got it. So they need hands to make it happen. Oh, and no one wants to work. That's the solution. That's the problem. That's what's causing all this. 
It has nothing to do with the fact that working your ass off at any retail job with the pay that it gives and the inflation prices, it's not like you're being overworked essentially where you're not making enough money to get by, but oh, I'm going to be a person that is just taken advantage of at any of the grocery shops. You know what I'm saying? It's bad out there. I literally went and got a pub sub the other day because I live in Florida and they are so good. Shut up! And oh my God, I asked I asked for extra mail. I ordered the pub sub and ultimate with black olives, green peppers, Munster cheese and all that. And I asked for extra mayo. And usually they do it. Usually they hook me up. They go, oh yeah, this is a big boy because I pre-order on the app. <laughs> No, usually they hook me up, man. Oh, I'm leaving, looking like Tory Black after a day of work when I'm done with that sandwich. I'm just in awe. No, but guess what? They put on less than what they normally put on. It was like an inconvenience I was to them for asking for more. I could not believe the amount of mayo they gave me the last time. Like, at least, if you're going to at least fuck me, at least kiss me first. So I, I do have concerns. And it's not just wings that will have you digging deep into your pockets on game day. Your Super Bowl party is going to cost about 14% more than it did last year. Ah, uh, sounds fun. Go to Aldi's. A lot of- Ah, queso and chips. This is the labor shortage, the yeah. supply chain crunch, and then commodity prices that have been jumping. Yeah, I feel like not everything needs to be overpriced, but I think the corporations have us brainwashed that everything needs to be overpriced. I'm not saying that inflation is not good or bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm aware that inflation is bad. I'm aware that the work shortage is happening. I'm aware, but I think the companies go, because everything is so bad, the everyday average Joe will complain about the prices going up, but we can do that because they think that we necessarily have to. Like, I feel like I don't know how business works. I'm not a CEO. I work for a corporation. But I feel like if people really wanted to watch their pennies, the companies, I feel like prices wouldn't have to be jacked up so much. You know what I mean? I, I just think corporations... There's a bunch of rodents. They're a bunch of rats. A bunch of scumbag leeches. You may want to load up on chips and veggies. Why? Veggie prices are the same. Yeah, who the hell goes, oh my God, I'm going to the Super Bowl party and I want veggies. And I'm not saying people don't touch the veggie plates, but those are the ones that go around the party going, ah, I don't know anything about sports. Who watches sports ball? They're annoying. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. And you know I'm correct. Listen, you don't have to be into sports, but my girlfriend does it perfectly. Like, she knows, like, three-fourths of it. Like, there's a one-fourth that she doesn't know, but that's, like, just the, like, the games. You know what I mean? Like, she knows the rules. She knows the players. There is nothing worse, and this goes with any gender, when they go, when they, like, are so against sports that they will judge you for being into the game at a Super Bowl party, and they go, oh, you're into sports. Ball. And I'm like, oh, you're into hentai porn where squids are banging women? Shut the hell up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> squids banging women is the reason why this is brought to you by Rich Kaylee Master Barbershop at richkaybarber.com. <laughs> I don't know what he gets down with, but I do know that he gives a flawless haircut. Oh, it was funny. <laughs> Literally, I get a haircut probably once or twice a month, and all these people were, like, commenting. Well, Cal, to put the comment, it seems like you get a haircut every two weeks, which is true. But then other people were like, I think he gets it every week. And they commented on the picture of me and Rich after my haircut. And I was like, Kelta had a point. I do go pretty often. But then the other people commenting were like, yeah, he goes every day. Yeah, and guess what, buddy? I'm better looking than you. So this following segment has been brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop at richkbarber.com. When I tell you that he is the best barber in all of the Bay Area, like I could literally go into any of the chains and get a haircut at any time, but I will let my hair grow out for five more days because he's always booked up. So you got to order at Rich K Barber. You got to 
order for the haircut at richkbarber.com. You got to sign up for it ahead of time because he is always jam-packed, man. There is never a day that Rich Keeley is not cutting hair. But a lot of times, you can join the waiting list and you'll get the appointment sooner. Like, let's say you want it for February 17th, but there's not one until February 21st. Yeah, it might be an inconvenience to wait a few days, but someone is going to cancel. And even if you do have to wait, Rich Keeley is so elite and Rich Keeley is so amazing at haircuts that it's worth the wait. And he's a really good dude. Like, I love Rich Keeley. He's a good guy, a good father, and an even better hairstylist. All righty. For all the info, richkbarber.com. When you sit down in that chair, just say, Ryan Hoppy sent me and I heard about it on Happy Hour. Happy Hour. He never holds back. And he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. That the other stations are tuned in to. What's up? 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856. 4946773 So I grew up listening to a lot of radio in Chicago Eddie and Jobo on B96 Jonathan Brandmeier Steve Dahl Mancow's Morning Madhouse 670 to score you get the point I was into the radio shows in Chicago Shut up but also listen to Adam Carolla, the T-Man, Opie and Anthony Howard. Here's what I'm saying to you. I know a lot about radio, but on the weekend, and I'm not saying that to Brad, because anybody that listens to radio can feel like they know a lot about radio. I'm just saying I know a lot about radio. I'm not saying that my opinions are better than you because I know a lot about radio, but I'm specifying that I like radio. So on the weekend, back in 2006, 2007, they did the B96 After Party. And they would have all these DJs for 20 minutes spin hip hop from back then, pop lock and drop it. And then they would have EDM music afterwards. Well, this commercial aired during it. And I love this commercial. This to me is top notch radio commercial. And the best part is this I would tape the show on the weekend. So I have over 20 tapes. So recently I bought a tape converter. And I converted all these over. So I have 20 B96 after parties. But I can't play the other ones or play any of it on here because uh, it was aired on the radio. It's not my work and copyright. But I'm pretty sure I can air this. It's Mags Madsen Mitsubishi. It is the most Chicago thing you're ever going to hear in your life. Like, if you want to know what Chicago commercials are like, it's like this, baby. One second. We're just loading up the tape here. That's the tape sound effect. What? You're celebrating the new year? Grand Puba, you're still celebrating? Oh, with incredible deals on every new 06 and 07 Mitsubishi, including the all-new 07 Outlander. It's outselling, outpricing, outseating, out everything the competition. Plus, there's 0% financing on new 06 and 07 Mitsubishi or cash back from $1,000 to $6,000 to qualify buyers. That is something to toot your horn about. Max Madsen, you might be mad in bed, but you're not crazy. He's mad, he's bad. Yeah. But you'll be glad when you meet Max, Max, Max. What's up? He's mad. He is. He's bad. He is. Max Madsen. Max Madsen Mitsubishi in Downers Grove, Countryside, and Aurora. Shop online at maxmadsen.com. And now we know why I didn't get laid till I was 21, barely. No! Happy Hot Topic! months ago. Ah, let me rewind this. That was almost the perfect transition because any other radio show would have edited that out. Oh, we got to be perfect. No, 
I'm never perfect a day of my life. It might have been roughly two months ago when Kanye West was publicly asking Kim Kardashian to run right back to him. But these days, it looks like his sentiment may have changed because now Ye is now airing his issues with her on social media regarding... Oh, that's good. You have all these issues and you're trying to win your kids back. Let's post about it on social media when I'm literally the most famous human being since Beethoven. What a good idea, Kanye, you mentally ill idiot. Go get meds, go get a shrink, go get help. Hurting their children. Yeah. Meanwhile, their divorce proceedings, which began nearly a year ago after Kim filed papers to end their six-year marriage. Like that song from 2010 with Ushers. I'm ready to sign these papers. Is stagnant. A source close to the situation told E! News, Kim is still trying to get the married status dissolved to single before they finalize the divorce, but Ye has yet to sign. <laughs> They've been saying this since December. They, It's going to be frightening. They're literally going to have to hold him up and be like, Kanye, sign the papers. No, man. I'm an artist. And we got to figure this out. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Moving this divorce isn't something he's acting quickly on, despite Kim's efforts. Yeah. In his latest post about Kim, Ye wrote on Instagram, quote, this is my first divorce. I need to know what I should do about my daughter being... <laughs> this is my first divorce. Marry Julie and it'll be your second in a minute. Put on TikTok against my will. Yeah. Kim, who started a joint account on TikTok with North last November, replied through her Instagram story, quote, Kanye's constant attacks on me in interviews and on social media is actually more hurtful than any TikToks North might create. <gasps> As a parent who is the main provider and caregiver for our children, <gasps> I'm doing my best to protect our Kanye's a deadbeat. daughter while also allowing her to express her creativity in the medium that she wishes with adult supervision because it brings her happiness. Divor Here's the thing. Is Kanye's just trying to gaslight Kim? Because think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. I'm aware that there are creeps on social media. I'm aware that an eight-year-old girl should maybe not be on TikTok. But this isn't some half-ass mom. It's a full-ass mom that lives in Largo. This is a full-ass mom that lives in Hollywood that might be the most connected person on earth. I don't think the algorithm, I don't think TikTok would allow Northwest to get creepy messages because Kim Kardashian has the power to find their IEP address and get them shut down. If you were to be a creep and to try to slide into an eight-year-old girl's DMs, I'm pretty sure Kim would see that. I'm sure there's probably people that see that and send that in. You know what I mean? So when Kanye is trying to guess like Kim by saying, oh, you can't be on here. It's she, she's different. She's a business. She's an eight-year-old business, literally. For, for Kim, it's a business. Force is difficult enough on our children, and Kanye's obsession with trying to control, manipulate our situation so negatively and publicly yeah. is only causing further pain for all. And better sex with Pete because I take out the aggression on him. Yay responded to Kim's note later in the day, questioning, what do you mean by main provider? However, Kim's rep had no immediate comment about yeah, that, that was uh, that's when you know maybe that Kim kind of went a little bit over the line is when Kanye is like, yeah, what do you mean, provider? I do give you money. And she's like, well, he does have a point there. You know a celebrity has been caught in the corner. You know a celebrity has been caught being a douchebag, being a liar when they um like will not respond to a comment. Like if you're completely innocent and you got nothing to hide, you will just go, no. Kanye, you did not pay me anything. But the fact that he asked them to respond and they said no comment necessary, no comment needed, no comment coming from us, that means that Kim went, eh, that was a little bit of a false thing. He does kind of pay. 856-49 Hoppy, and it's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And guess what? You know what time it is? No! Happy Hot Topic! Kanye West is calling out his estranged wife, Kim Kardashian, yet again. <gasps> and this time he's dragging other celebrities into it. Sounds like Kanye. Sociopaths that are very talented and famous celebrities, especially the ones that don't follow anybody on Twitter because they think they're better than you, even though they're, they have the same amount of time on earth as you do. Oh, yeah, I'm such a cool celebrity. Uh, yeah, people like that, those sociopaths that think they're better than their fans and then they wonder why their fan base is so limited because they only are fans of people that they treat badly like Kanye West fans like real Kanye fans from the 2000s are getting sick of him but the like kiss asses that think that Kanye can do no wrong are literally just as bad of a person as Kanye you know that really diehard Kanye fan that defends everything he does and this is about anybody any of the people on Twitter they're all people I wouldn't want to hang out with they're all bad people 
Because if you were to be Kanye West and you get a house right across the block from your ex-wife, he's being artsy. He's fighting for his kids like the man that he is. He's so noble. But an everyday average Joe gets a house across the block from their wife. They would be deemed a creep. Kanye West shits. Kanye West is going to die. Kanye West speaks. He eats. He listens to things. Not really. What I'm saying is this. He's a human being. He's no different than us. So just because he's a famous celebrity, that doesn't mean his actions aren't any less psychotic. We got to quit defending him. The Donda rapper took to his Instagram to share tweets posted by Candace Owens, where she seemingly took Kanye's side in his ongoing feud with the Skims founder. Oh, God. Listen, I'm a Kanye fan. It's breaking my heart seeing him act like this. But God, you know, Kanye West is a douche if Candace Owens is defending him. Oh, God. Candace Owens reeks of the girl that wasn't popular growing up and they didn't really get a glow up until she got famous. Because she's not even that good looking. Like, Candace Owens is pretty. But her repulsive opinions and her repulsive voice and her repulsive demeanor and her repulsive things that she says and everything about her makes her so unattractive. Like if Candace Owens was a sweet person, was nice, fun to be around, talented, she would be like a 10 out of 10 because she's gorgeous. But yuck, that personality of Candace Owens, I am the authority on everything because I use big words. I am like the female version of Ben Shapiro. Another small dick loser. What I'm saying is this. Those aren't bad looking people. Even Ben Shapiro isn't quote unquote ugly, but their opinions make them so much uglier. The talk show host posted that she agreed with Ye not wanting his daughter North, who he shares with Kim on TikTok. Yeah, and then that's the other annoying thing is everybody assumes because she's an African-American woman that she's always going to say liberal opinions. But then when she says Republican opinions, everybody, it's just, it's just really sad because she knows what she's doing. She's splitting the nation just with Republicans and Democrats. She says, uh, God, she's the worst. God, she is the worst. Writing. Kim is wrong on this one. The psychological effects of social media on young girls is real and documented. What about the psychological effects of your father when he's running for president and mentally ill and not on medicine, Candace? What about the fact that he says that you guys almost got an abortion? And that clip lives online, Candace? It's actually Kanye that is trying to protect his daughter in this regard. And Kim is spinning this as obsession and control. So when Kanye embarrasses the family, that's him trying to protect his daughter. When he talked about the abortion, that's him protecting his daughter. Maybe it's because you have daddy issues that you don't know what a real father is. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. I'm Candace Owens. The way I speak. I always talk like this because I am the authority on everything. God, is she the worst? The absolute worst. <sighs> you want to hear a little bit of this imbecile? Absolutely hate yeah. politics. Oh, you do? But you tweet about politics, you dummy. Absolutely hate politics politics oh really and somehow that's landed me smack in the middle of politics because you have no talent you have no redeeming anything so you have to go with the hack opinions you're like my old classmate charlie kirk charlie kirk i'm not jealous of the money or the clout or followers he has but charlie kirk i forget the name of the party he created whatever he's like the next rush limbaugh he's this loudmouth kid he's like my age he graduated from Wheeling High School. I went to John Hersey High School. He was like the backup center on the basketball team. And this really kind dude who had come to the rival section of the football games. And now he's like spewing all these hateful things and going to something called Politicon and getting into a fight with people. And I'm like, maybe Charlie Kirk was hiding it the whole time like a pussy because he didn't want to show anything in high school. But this, I am Charlie Kirk. I am the authority on all things political. No, you barely got any playing time on the basketball team. And you hung out with me in the cheer section. That says a lot. The few times we said hi, Charlie, you weren't hanging out in the VIP section of high school. You were hanging out with me and the kids I hung out with. And I'm not talking myself down because now I'm great. Now I'm cool. Now I'm wonderful. But 2012, 2011, Ryan, oh, Charlie Kirk, so outspoken. But he was hanging out with Ryan Hoppy in high school. And that is the truth. 
And whenever I've tweeted about it or uh, posted, he'll, I did it like once or twice. And then it felt like he probably thought I was chasing him for clout. And I'm not. It's just utter. It's fascinating to see somebody that you used to see at basketball camp. And you would say, that guy is going to have 1.5 million followers and is going to spew hateful opinions about people. It's uh, unbelievable. Like uh, Mike Olivero, his, one of his best friends in high school was the coach of the uh, Oakland, or I keep saying Oakland Raiders, of the Los Vegas Raiders that went to the playoffs and he said it was cool seeing his old friend on TV doing well in the playoffs and like it's cool seeing Charlie Kirk do well but none of that's genuine he was the most cool it's and I'm not obsessing over it but everybody messages me I'm like he, he's he's a pussy he never said any of this and now no I know everything oh Jesus Christ and that's what's annoying about all those political guys you really think Tucker Carlson's hanging out at his house like yeah. It is because of the propaganda left that dinner is not ready yet. Is it because you think that the liberal left is going to win that you don't have my dinner ready? Is it because of the Obama administration that my dinner's not ready? Now, I don't really see Tucker uh, walking around the house having any confidence. Any of those guys that spew out political opinions and they're mean, when they go home, they're into men, women, they're pansexual, they're aqua teen, hunger for sexual, whatever you're into, you are whipped because you are overcompensating. I have an outlandish, bombastic political opinion. But when I go home, I read poems and get whipped in the bedroom. When did uh, me ranting about Republicans quickly lose the sight from the live read we're supposed to do? Uh, this has been brought to you by, not these opinions, but this podcast has been brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that West Chase Printing on Instagram and DJ Tone Tampa on Instagram is the best in the Bay, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. Here's the deal. Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need printed up, I'm telling you. I am literally on my knees ready to say that they can get it done at westchaseprinting.com. But you got to believe me. And when you get that invoice, tell them I sent you. They were already going to hook you up with a top-notch deal because that's what they do at West Chase Printing. But oh boy, when you name drop me, you're a winner, baby. Happy hour. Happy hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2, but I'm already 38.1. I've wasted half my life. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Yeah, 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. You know what you're going to get on Hoppy Hour? You're going to get hot topics. You know what I mean, Jelly Mean? You are going to get top notch content because here on Hoppy Hour, the award winning podcast by yours truly, Ryan Hoppy. It's home to oh, Happy Hot Topic. Pete Davidson got a not so great welcome when he went to a basketball game in Syracuse, New York. This ah, well, weekend. why is why is he in Syracuse? Oh, I, I know that Syracuse basketball team is usually good, but Syracuse is literally an awful town. Maybe I'll have a morning show there someday, and I'll have to scrap this audio. Uh, Syracuse is literally very snowy, and uh, it brings out the pretentious sports announcers. Hello. 
I'm doing the national show on CBS Sports Radio. I have your typical sports announcer, and I got my broadcasting degree, my communications degree from the University of Syracuse. And now I do overnight radio on ESPN Radio, Fox News Radio, Fox Sports Radio, or Sporting News Radio. You know what I mean? You ever hear any of those sport announcers? Yeah, they might do the play by play for the afternoon NCAA conference championship for volleyball. They all got their degree from the University of Syracuse. Pete Davidson got a not so great welcome when he went to a basketball game in Syracuse, New York this weekend. And it's all because three years ago, Pete said that the central New York City where he filmed a movie with Machine Gun Kelly was trash. Yeah. Who the hell goes, oh my God, I want to go to Syracuse. That is that small D energy of the awful Midwest towns, Cleveland. That is the small D energy of the awful Midwest towns, Cincinnati. Uh, oh, but now Cincinnati is cool because they're winning. Even your quarterback hates it. Well, when Pete attended Syracuse University College's basketball game while wearing the college's native color orange, the crowd booed him during a timeout in the first half. Oh, wow. That's so edgy. That's so wild. That is so original, guys. Man. That is some top-notch content. How long did it take you to come up with that? Booing Pete Davidson at a game. Oh, wow. So original. Almost as original as the New York Knicks fans chanting, Trey Young is balding. And then they lose the playoff series in five games. Yeah. I think the moral, the thing that we can take away from seeing Pete Davidson getting booed at the Syracuse game and me bringing up the Knicks fans going off on the Atlanta Hawks players is that New York is home to awful sports fans. But the boos didn't deter Pete at all. He was actually a very good sport about the booing. And he got a blowjob the previous night from Kim Kardashian. So I think he's winning in life and you're living in Syracuse. He laughed, clapped, and waved when he saw himself (laughs) on the Jumbotron. (laughs) He's high as hell like, ah, what the hell is going on here? They're booing him like, yeah, you loser, you imbecile. Yeah. And he's like, I just banged Kim Kardashian and I smoke weed every day. Hell yeah. Too long after the incident, Syracuse.com <coughs> reporter Mike Curtis quoted Pete, who reportedly said, quote, I don't hate Syracuse. And, and you know that insider from Syracuse.com is that's probably like the website for the local newspaper. And Oh, he covers the hot beat of Syracuse. They probably talk about the morning DJ who's a local celebrity and the local chef from the local bar and the local TV news anchor. And we saw them out and about. We are on the beat. For the small towns. Because that's how it is, is all the local celebrities become, like, I kind of felt it in Cleveland. Like, they, they write about you. Like, like it's Hollywood, because they're imagining that they're in Los Angeles. And added that his past comments, quote, just didn't really come out the best way. Back- nah, he meant to say Syracuse is awful. Back in 2018, P and MGK filmed the movie Big Time Adolescence in the City. And that- You ever seen that girlfriend, Big Time Adolescence? I guess not. I was asking my girlfriend. Because I, uh... You ever seen Big Time Adolescence with Pete Davidson? Not yes or no. She is not. I was just wondering from the crowd, from the peanut gallery, how the hell that movie was. I don't really assume it was that good. Yeah. That September, Pete said on Syracuse XM's The Howard Stern Show. I think I've heard of it. Sirius XM's Howard Stern Show. Kind of a big deal. I think I've heard of that guy, Howard Stern. Thank you for letting me know where he works. Thank you for the lesson. XM's The Howard Stern Show. That one. Dude, I was shooting this movie out in Syracuse. Syracuse, you know, it's trash. Oh, and- you took my words. You took the words out of my mouth the wrong way. How, how are you saying? And he continued on to say, worse than Staten Island, the nicest hotel in Syracuse is like a f***ing Ramada. <laughs> Same in Cleveland. But that wasn't the last of Pete's disses to Syracuse. Yeah. During an on-camera interview with Variety in 2019, Pete actually dissed the city yet again. by Because it sucks. Saying it sucks. The whole town of Syracuse blows. Yeah, it's kind of like Rochester, New York. Here's how you know that a city like that sucks. <laughs> I really shouldn't poke the bear. Uh, you know why that city sucks? Rochester, New York. Their most famous food. The food that everybody thinks of when they go to Rochester, New York. Some people, when they go to Chicago, they think of the Italian beef, the deep dish pizza. You go to Cincinnati, think of Skyline Chili. 
go to Kansas City, you think of barbecue. When you go to the great city that looks nothing like Gotham, known as Rochester, New York, they are home to garbage plates. I'm not kidding. I got so drunk when I was there seven years ago that I literally woke up with some of it in my mouth. And it was the most repulsive moment of my life. I woke up. The, the, the sentence is clear. I woke up hungover in Rochester, New York with some of the garbage plate in my mouth. I mean, if that is not the trashiest sentence that has ever been said in the humanity, in the amount of time that humans have been around, then I don't know what sentence is. I was hung over in Rochester, New York, with a garbage plate in my mouth. I mean, mm. no! Happy Hot Topic! It's a big guy. Pete Davidson makes a powerful appearance in a new Super Bowl ad. In the commercial for Hellman's, football coach and former linebacker Jared Mayo tackles food waste in the only way he knows how. By talking about mayo. By literally tackling it. Yeah. Don't toss that. You can make grilled cheese with that bread. Mm. But it's the moment that Pete makes his cameo that everyone is talking about. Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's almost like you like to talk about Pete Davidson. Oh, we're Pete Davidson haters. But all you do is talk about him. Kind of like my haters. Like, Mom, okay. make grilled cheese. One second. Uh, please, I'll, we'll, we'll get to the grilled cheese in a second. Mayo, it's okay. This is a message out there. <laughs> to all my haters. Damn, son, where'd you find this? On Reddit. Damn, son, where'd you find this? On the Facebook groups. Damn, son, where'd you find this? In my DMs. If you hate me so much, man. And this goes to Pete Davidson haters as well. Because we're both mentally ill. I'm not comparing myself to him because I don't have his net worth and I'm not banging Kim Kardashian, but I do have a hot girlfriend and everyone goes, oh, how is she dating you? So I can see a lot of Pete Davidson in me. I get a good amount of haters. I, I, I do. And here's the thing. You don't really hate me. You're projecting onto me. It bothers you that I've made it this far. It bothers you from what I've began to where I am now. And this is not me applauding myself. I make the same money, but I live a good life. And that bothers the haters. And if you hated me so much... You wouldn't be talking about me. If you hated me so much, you wouldn't be writing Facebook posts, DMs, and Reddit posts. We get 24 hours in a day. And if you're thinking about me, a goofy radio guy you've never won, bitch, I am winning. <laughs> Listen, you know who is my true hater? My ex that dumped me in the middle of Target. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. I have not heard from her since that day. Oh, yeah. Good times. The good memories. I thought I wanted to marry her. Uh, Virgo, look. No, it, it, it worked out. Don't press that button. It worked out. I met a better girl. This following segment has been brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. When I tell you that he is the best MMA trainer in all of the Bay Area, kickboxing, boxing, and more, when I tell you that he is the best in the Bay, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. 20, 2800, 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. For all the info, AmirAcademy.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. What are you looking at? Loser. You're a loser. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! 
Tom Brady will never say never. The NFL star quarterback isn't ruling out a potential return to the NFL. All right, all right, all right. Tom Brady has literally done everything perfect. He won six Super Bowls for the Patriots, a team that was never a winner. Comeback after comeback with the Patriots. Then he goes to the Buccaneers. And he wins the Super Bowl. Granted, the team was very healthy, but whatever. He wins the Super Bowl. So then a team like the Buccaneers, the 2021-2022 Buccaneers, the secondary is awful. Al Keck on 102.5 The Bone covered it the whole year. The secondary on the Bucs was awful. But Tom Brady led them to a 13-4 and record. And they go to the second round of the playoffs. And he gives them the ultimate comeback. Essentially, the defense lost the game. So Tom Brady, in his last game, even though he loses, it wasn't like he lost on a game uh, losing interception, like a pick six. He had nothing to do with the Rams' loss. So by him retiring, it makes him look like a good father, makes him look like a winner. But if Tom Brady were to return to the NFL, I'm out, man. Because then you're Brett Favre. And that's the... I don't know if he doesn't want to be around Giselle and his kids. Because he keeps talking about, oh, the the time is short. But then you want to go back to the NFL and go through the training camp? What? What? Is Giselle that awful to be around? Is your relationship with her that strained? Despite announcing his retirement on February 1st. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to take things as they come. Why? You're... What? Why? I think that's the best way to put it. And I I don't think anything never... You know, you never say never. What? But but, 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 you were just saying... God, I I can't. I've lost a lot of respect for him with this. Do I think he's the greatest of all time? Blah, 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 blah. But I think this whole, I'm a nice guy. I sell protein powder for 70 bucks a thing. I'm over it. If he were to say, I am never playing again and I'm going to hang out with my kids until they graduate, I would get it. But this is where I'm like, oh, God, I see why people don't like Tom Brady. And It's all an act. And- You know, at the same time, I know that I'm very, I feel very good about my decision, so. Mom, I'm done. (sighs) What would you need to prove? It's like when a radio show goes off the air for 10 years and goes, hi guys, hi from the past. Who am I talking about? Hi guys, remember me? Don't, don't do that, Tom. Don't do that. No! Happy Hot Topic! Zendaya is defending her HBO Max hit show, Euphoria. Oh, we're offended over an awful show? While speaking to Entertainment Weekly ahead of Sunday's new episode, the 25-year-old Emmy winner responded to Dare condemning the show for allegedly glorifying teen drug use and addiction. That was Dare. They're not even open anymore. Who that? I mean, I'm not in fifth grade, so I don't know if Officer Friendly comes by. But uh, remember all the officers in second grade? Marijuana is bad. Marijuana makes you feel numb. Marijuana makes you feel a little faded. And should never be taken. And we're all like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. So what are the bad parts? (laughs) Smoke weed every day. So dare, no one's really talked about them. They're a thing in the 2000s. But then they see Euphoria, a show about drugs, is relevant. They're equivalent to um, PETA. Quote, our show is in no way a moral tale to teach people how to live their life or what they should be doing. Um, And then the thing is, too. Watched a little bit of Euphoria today with my girlfriend. Not for me, but the acting is wonderful. The girl Martha from Baskets, she plays a drug dealer. It's phenomenal. The acting's not for me. It's not for me, but I can appreciate it. It's like good country music. I'm not going to want to listen to it, but I I appreciate it. But there was no part of the show where I went, oh, yeah, I want to do heroin and opioids. Like, it makes it look like a miserable time. So I don't even think Dare watched it. They just hear a name like Euphoria and they see beautiful women and they see drug use and they're like, hey, how's it going? 
The Dare Lion's official name is Darren. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. Oh, happy hot topic! <sighs> What's going on? Quote, Our show is in no way a moral tale to teach people how to live their life or what they should be doing. Yeah. If anything, the feeling behind euphoria or whatever we have always been trying to do with it is to hopefully help people feel a little bit less alone in their experience and their pain. Yeah, there's nothing fun about it. Like I was watching a scene today and one of the girls is like, she's like high on heroin. She's talking to like the blonde girl and they're doing an intervention with the girl that's on heroin played by Zendaya, Zendaya, whatever her dumb name is. She's not dumb. I just hate that name. And that hair. Uh, what I'm saying is, so there's a scene where they're doing an intervention, her and like eight other girls. And she says to the one girl, she's like, hey, when did you begin banging or whatever the name of the character was? And the girl's like, I, I didn't do that. And the whole room goes, what? And Zendaya in the middle of her intervention is like, why did you bang Scott or whatever? And then the girl that was in the room, one of the girls doing the intervention, that was her ex-boyfriend. And then you get that whole cat fight scene. I'm not going to play the cat fighting sound effects because my cat will attack me. But it was that thing where they're like, oh my God, you fucked Scott. And I'm like, oh, this is what we're watching. Literally a drug addicted teenage version of Desperate Housewives. And maybe feel like they're not the only one going through or dealing with what they're dealing with. Yeah. In Sunday's emotional episode... Oh, it was so emotional! Sunday's character, Rue, faced an intervention and dealt with drug withdrawal. Yeah, and then she blamed her friend for fucking her other friend's ex. Ahead of the episode, the Spider-Man No Way Home star shared on Instagram what she hopes viewers will get from watching Rue. She is a good actress, though. She's in Spider-Man, and then there she is looking like a trashy-ass heroin addict that you'd see in Palace Park. Journey. Quote. Or, uh, Lorraine, Ohio. It's my hope for people watching that they still see her as a person worthy of their love and worthy of their time and that she has a redemptive quality still. I don't care anymore. Oh, we are going to hear from the man who's being held captive, Taylor Swift's boyfriend. <laughs> Joe Alwyn is happy being in a relationship with Taylor Swift. I am so happy. I, every time I'm out with Taylor Swift, it looks like one of the videos from 20 years ago where the, ter never, never mind. She doesn't look, he doesn't look at all like one of the terrorist videos. I'm being held captive with Taylor Swift. Blink twice. The 30 year old British actor referenced his better half during a recent interview for his new limited series, Conversations with Friends. Yeah. In the series, based on Sally Rooney's novel by the same name, yeah. Joe is in an open relationship. I wonder if he is now. I would have to be. I was dating her. Yuck. It's everybody else's fault. During a press screening for the show on Tuesday, he yeah. was asked about the thought of being in an open relationship, to which he responded, quote, I think people can do what they want and makes them happy. I'm obviously happy in a monogamous relationship. Uh, because you're saying so? There's no way you would lie. Um, I love being around Taylor Swift. She's so wonderful. He said according to Deadline. Yeah. Adding, quote, But I think one of the interesting things about Sally's writings and what she explores is yeah. happiness, love, desire, and intimacy outside of those constructs that we create for ourselves. Oh, shut up. Oh, he's one of those wordy ones. I imagine when uh, Taylor Swift and her boyfriend, like, you'll say, good morning, babe, how are you? I imagine it's like an essay between those two asshats. They deserve each other. We had our first date today, which is always... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, poor Alec Baldwin. How do you do it? Accidentally killing somebody and then claiming that you didn't shoot the woman. And now you have to go back to work to make that awful movie that you signed a contract about? <laughs> You're a really noble man, Alec Baldwin. We had our first date today, which yeah. is always... Uh, yeah. Tricky. <laughs> I don't work as much as I used to. Alec Baldwin. Thank God we don't need to see your douchey acting. I'm Alec Baldwin. Oh, shut up. God, I want to punch him in the face. Alec Baldwin is back on set. Yay, more movies. I mean, the fact that the movie was called Rust kind of displays, kind of represents his career. The actor returned to work for the first time since the tragic shooting on the set of his film Rust last October no. that left cinematographer Helena Hutchins dead. Okay. Baldwin reflected on the emotions he's feeling after so much time off, telling fans in a candid Instagram video this week that readjusting to a professional schedule has been challenging. Oh, it's been so hard going back to acting after accidentally killing somebody. 
And I love how there's only nine likes on this video. God, is he the worst? Oh, I think he's the worst celebrity ever. Yeah. With Hutchins' loss still weighing so heavily. Oh, I accidentally killed somebody after being so against guns forever. It was almost like a little bit of karma. Not at all. Kind of. And then I, I had to go be interviewed by George Stephanopoulos and then also be interviewed by the paparazzi that I attacked while yelling at my wife. And I literally got away with a crime or at least an incident because I'm a famous actor. Oh, please respect my privacy. Please know that I'm going through a lot. You go to work and you forget yeah. what you're supposed to do. Got it. I just was like, oh God, what do you do? Yeah. How do you move on? By hiring a PI to make sure it goes away and having someone with power like George Stephanopoulos, who's another liberal ass kisser, defend you. What is acting or any of this nonsense? Uh. What is the point of life? Now I'm acting like I'm having an existential crisis because of her, when really I'm having an existential crisis because I'm close to death and I'm a hack. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. God, he's the worst. This following segment was brought to you by the Quad Pod Network. QOD, POD.com. They got the best podcast, baby. And they're also home to happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> Get what I did there? All right, here's the deal. QOD, POD, dot com slash Ryan Hoppy. Happy hour. Happy hour. This little Bizarre. guy. Bizarre. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give Bizarre. it to you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. Hey, who's got a peanut for turtle face? Call Hoppy now. 856-49 Hoppy. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Adele is setting off engagement rumors after wearing a massive ring on that finger at the... Yeah, trust me, an NBA uh, agent that has access to any side chick ever. Yeah, I'm not marrying Adele. Brit Awards Tuesday night. I'm an average Joe and I'm not marrying her. God, does she reek of pretentious douchebag vibes. All right, I can't play the music here. Let me uh, skip over this. Um... Here's the thing. Adele just lost her show in Vegas. I'm crying because of all the money I lost, but I'm making it seem like these tears are because of the fact that I won't be around my fans. God, is she the worst in those videos? Here's the thing. You find that imitation of her crying to be annoying. Then go look up her video. It's the same thing. But when Adele does it, she's being spiritual. When I do it, I'm psychotic. Here's the thing. Adele is now sporting this ring she wants to be relevant no one really bought her music at target oh look you can buy a dell cd the same music you can get on spotify account you have in your pocket in your pocket when you go jesus christ when you go home from target oh no 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 i want to pay 12 bucks for an adele cd yeah things are going really good for her like i know they're going good but what i'm saying to you is now she's putting out this massive ring because she needs to be relevant somehow because she's beginning to kind of lose her edge. She came back. We saw that she lost her way. Blah, blah, blah. But we're not impressed anymore. That's the 33-year-old singer looking... She's only 33. She looks like a good 42. Stunning in an Armani black V-neck dress with a sheer neckline at the annual ceremony. She's one of those where she lost so much weight that her skin just doesn't look healthy, man. I'm just like, ugh. God, I bet there's a lot of dead skin. But it's the sparkler on her left hand stealing all the attention. Ah, so she has a ring. Okay. Hey, honey. Rich is like, what up? It's like, hey, is it okay if I wear this ring tonight? He's like, whatever. I'm going to go bang Ben Simmons' side chick. 
Kim Kardashian is opening up about the epiphany that she says caused her divorce from Kanye West. What, being fed up with it? You just gotta roll with it. Yeah. The 41-year-old KKW beauty founder covers the March issue of Vogue. And oh, she's such a powerful woman. And inside, she says that for so long she did what made other people happy. What? But in the last two years, she decided to put herself first. Why not? <laughs> Quote, that feels really good. And even if that created changes and caused my divorce, yeah. I think it's important to be honest with yourself Got about it. what really makes you happy. I've chosen myself. <gasps> I think it's okay to choose you. At the end of the day, life is about being happy. Yeah. Of course, Kim filed for divorce wow. from the grand. That is, that is some powerful words, man. From the true poet of our generation. At the end of the day, life is about being happy. You know what else? That is a deep quote. Tell you right now. But let me tell you, there is another quote that is literally one from our time. When we are dead in a hundred years, people will go, hey, what are some of the quotes that are known from the 2000s? Hey, what were some of the things that people said back then? Hey, I want to know what the overall vibe of back then was. And they will say this. What up, Ray J? Ray J, tweak all I told you. Man, Ray J, let me hear you something on me. When you jacking off to this, yeah. uh, when you really just in your zone. Got it. Go hard on them, homie. Yeah, so we got that quote. And we got this quote. It's about being happy. Of course, Kim filed for divorce from the Grammy winner last year after six years of marriage. And now, the Skims founder says her 40s are all about being on Team Kim. Hell yeah, midlife crisis, woohoo! I'm going to work out, I'm going to have more fun, spend more time with my kids and the people who make me happy. Ah, uh, it sounds like a good time. I'm sure she's so really happy and not just doing it for social media. Guess what time it is? Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Kylie Jenner is officially a mother of two. Yeah. Can you see the baby? She's like, no, I'm going to have an awful mother and father. I don't want to come out. The 24-year-old gave birth to her second child with Travis Scott. The oh, Travis Scott, such a good role model. Two who have been in an on-again, off-again relationship since cheating, 2017 cheating, cheating. are already proud parents to three-year-old daughter Stormy Webster. Stormy. Oh, I'm sure Travis is so proud to be around his daughter that he so cares about. Excited to be a big sister. He's not a deadbeat. She is very excited to be a big sister. We first learned Kai was pregnant again back in August. Stormy broke the happy news to Grandma Kris Jenner. What do you have? Uh, it's weird to think that she's a grandma. She just doesn't have grandma vibes. Crazy. Oh, what is this? What is this? Chris is like, or uh, yeah, it's Chris Jenner, and she's like seeing the pictures of the ultrasound. She's like, Are you pregnant? <laughs> Man, Travis, you do not know how to pull out at all. 856 49 happy. And I just don't know how I'm ever going to get over this. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to move past this. Yeah. 90 Day Fiance star Jeffrey Paschal sentenced to 18 years in prison without the possibility of parole. <laughs> After It's not 90 days this time. Being convicted of kidnapping and assaulting his ex-fiance. Oh, what a good guy. Also, if you watch 90 Day Fiance, you're a little trashy. The next thing I remember, he was beating me. The sentencing comes after a jury found the 44-year-old guilty of aggravated kidnapping. Yeah, he doesn't seem like a good dude. I wouldn't want him dating my daughter if I had one. Domestic assault and interference with emergency calls in October. Yeah. According to the Knox County, Tennessee District Attorney's Office, uh -huh. Jeffrey physically assaulted his then fiance in June of 2019. May he burn in hell and thank God he didn't get probation. The DA says Jeffrey, quote, grabbed the victim by the neck yeah. and slammed her head against the wall several times. Got it. She was also thrown to the ground and dragged. At the time, the DA's office also reported that Jeffrey, quote, took the victim's cell phone and did not allow her to leave the residence. The ordeal ended when Jeffrey's ex fled to a neighbor's house after he fell asleep. 
When officers arrived on the scene, they noted a large bruise on the victim's forehead, along with bruises and abrasions on her back, arms, and the inside of her lip. She was diagnosed with a concussion. At trial, the reality star testified that the victim's bruises were self-inflicted, but the jury disputed his testimony and found him guilty as charged. That's good. 856-49-HOPPY. Speaking of creeps. Staffers at CNN are still trying to get their heads around yesterday's abrupt departure of network chief Jeff Zucker. God, is that one ugly dude. Him and, him and Harvey Weinstein should have a competition of who's a bigger creep and who's uglier. Zucker resigned his position. Tonight on CNN saying he'd had a relationship with a colleague mm. and failed to alert his bosses per corporate policy. Got it. But insiders say his relationship with the executive was an open secret, and that's prompting more questions about the departure. So everybody knew and didn't want to lose their job. Emma Cogliano with more. Got it. CNN boss Jeff Zucker's romance with a top executive was no secret, according to published reports. It was an open secret, and I haven't even worked there for like eight years. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure she would have not got that. She would have so got that job if she didn't sleep with him. She didn't get it because of. Oh. Says former CNN anchor Soledad O'Brien. Jeff Zucker, his wife, and four children lived in an 11 room co op with a private elevator in this building on Manhattan's Upper East Side. They lived on the third floor. Allison Gullist and her husband lived in the apartment directly above them. Yeah, totally. Hey, can I work at CNN? Hey, I really want a job at CNN. And, and Jeff Zucker's like, do you? Do you want a job at CNN? Do you want to work there? Please, I'll do anything. I just want a job at CNN. Is this good? No, you really got to work to go to CNN. <laughs> 856 49 Hoppy. Yeah. Am I good now? Yeah, totally. A five six. We'll be right back. We gotta wash our hands. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. I totally just didn't go to Pornhub and put in BJ sound effects. This following segment, oh, what should I promote? It was brought to you by RyanHoppyRadio.com. That seems appropriate. There has all the links to all the podcasts I'm on. S apps I'm on. Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Mixcloud, Deezer, Geo Savon, I think that's how you say it, and more. For all the info, RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But, Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple, lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Speaking of drunken imbeciles. Can we say congratulations to our dear friend, friend Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen, it's official. He has a star uh, on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Is it in the uh, section of drunken assholes that embarrass themselves on live TV? Awesome as that. And you know what? He shared the day with his son, Ben. Oh, that's so good. He brought his kid. Oh, thank God it's not being babysat by the nanny. Oh, Andy Cohen brought his kid somewhere. He's being a present father. Well, going to something that's about him that's meaningless, being a, a little award on the ground. And he brought his kid. Andy Cohen's a really good dude. That is somebody I want to hang out with. Don't tell him any dirty secrets. Who happened to be celebrating his third birthday. Come oh, on. Time flies when you don't know anything about their kids. Now, look, wait, like can we just, I, I, I want to, wait, that? I just want to frame it for me. Oh, that's weird. 856, but you work at the Today Show, so you are a little weird. 
Oh, so it's official now. Oh my God. <laughs> After several months of dating, Pete Davidson referred to Kim Kardashian West as his girlfriend <gasps> for the first time during the interview. The Saturday Night Live star was speaking out about his upcoming Super Bowl commercial when he opened up about his personal life and his experiences in the spotlight. Yes. Saying, quote, I don't have an Instagram or Twitter or any of that stuff. So most of my daily life is getting into cars and showing up to set. If I'm off, I just either hang out with my friends or chill with my girlfriend inside. So I don't do much. I'm happy to be here. Pete and Kim sparked romance rumors in October, shortly after she made her SNL hosting debut. After a number of PDA packed dinner dates, their relationship was confirmed the following month. Yeah, when they were on SNL, I totally knew they were banging. That skit where it was Aladdin and Jasmine. Oh, yeah. You're going to bring me to SNL and kiss the dude you dating right in front of oh, Kanye. It wasn't like you cheating on her. Shut up. Speaking of cheating. I've got to show you this Met Gala photo. Steph looks at Aisha. I mean, he intimidates me in these situations. Because he's totally not cheating on me. All NBA players, they're all so loyal. And especially someone like Aisha that's totally not a cloud chasing imbecile. That's totally not pretentious. Oh, he would never cheat on her. Shut up! Oh, sorry. I'm sure they have a lovely marriage. He's so, like, he's always got it together and then he can tell that I'm nervous. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm like, people know that he cheats on me and I cheat on him. Uh -huh. So he's over there kind of giggling uh, yeah, at me, I, I, but I, I, in an encouraging he, way. He oh, yeah, you guys totally don't have an open marriage. This It's a very business-like situation here. I'm into your lovely wife here. I yeah. just, like, crumble like a cookie because I, like, I just... I don't know, I looked over at him and I was like, yeah. oh my God, he's staring at me. 10 years of marriage and three children later. Steph yeah, that'll end it. Steph and Aisha are stronger than ever. Oh, cause they say they are, even though there's all these reports that they're in an open relationship, they are stronger than ever business wise and money wise, but love wise, probably not. I'm just hanging out and, and admiring, you know, the merchandise and seeing how beautiful she looked. If you keep- And going, oh God, I want to leave. Keep it spicy like that, and I think that's how we got 10 years, and hopefully 10 yeah. years more. Yeah. The couple first met as teens at a high school church group, and no- Oh, that's gonna last forever. Oh, God. Just how to keep that spark alive. For us, it's just not forgetting to date each other. Make and it's not like like fa it's not like like father, like son is a real thing. Like, uh, it wasn't like Del Curry got caught cheating on his wife, and she did as well. The Curry family just seems spicy, bro. The time to get no pun intended dressed up and go out and do all the things. Yeah. That's what keeps it, you know, spicy. Three kids. And we bring some women home. So far, are we thinking about maybe another one one day? No, 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 no. No. Would you you a follow up? No. <laughs> maybe. No. Oh, God, they don't like each other. Eight five six forty nine hobby. This next headline right here is uh, it's just it just proves how annoying liberal celebrities are. I'm not saying Republican celebrities aren't annoying, but the ultra liberals are such assholes. Ken Jong and Robin Thicke are hacks. Why didn't Robin Thicke get canceled? Listen to Blurred Lines and get back to me. Are back on the set of The Masked Singer oh, after God. they had a exit when Rudy Giuliani was revealed as The Masked Singer. But they're back on set. There's a host photo shoot. They are not gone for good. Well, nobody thought they were going to be gone for good. So Rudy Giuliani shows up on The Masked Singer and everybody got mad. Listen. Do I think that Rudy Giuliani is a scumbag? Of course. Listen, do I think that Rudy Giuliani is a piece of garbage? Of course. But whatever happened to putting things aside? Remember the show back in the day on Fox News, Hannity and Combs? Alan Combs, rest in peace, and Sean Hannity. The whole point was an ultra Republican and ultra liberal. Can we get back to that? I remember my grandpa told me you used to not, you're not supposed to talk about sex, money, religion, and uh, politics, and that's all we talk about. And then Ken Jong and Robin Thicke walk off the set because the Republican walks on. God, you guys are douchebags. I'm not saying Rudy's not a douche, but you guys are underrated douchebags. Well, I mean, they clearly were upset. I know, but they weren't going to be gone for good. They made a statement. So it's yeah, they 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 really told him, Harvey. If they really made a statement, they wouldn't have returned. Oh, but they need the gig. Who's going? Ken Jong, such a funny guy. Yeah, his sitcom was around for the whole time. Doctor Ken. Everybody watched that. <laughs> What's going on with you, Lil? 
Jennifer Lopez is revealing new details about her rekindled romance with Ben Affleck. More like business relationship. The Marry Me actress graces the cover of the March 2022 issue of Rolling Stone yeah. and opened up to the publication about dating her former fiancé 18 years later, saying, We've both grown. We're the same and we're different. And that's what's nice. Mm. J-Lo explained that the renewed relationship is another shot at love for both of them. Oh, that's good. 856-49-HOPPY. <laughs> Speaking of a shot. Nothing really happened. We were just like friends hanging out. Yeah. Julia Fox is shutting down a recent report alleging she and Drake had a secret romance. Of course they did. I don't know what's been passed around more, a basketball or Julia Fox. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. And like that. 